Okay, so now that we've seen guess, let's go back and take a look at a few other things that NWB offers us. Okay, sometimes, all right, let me discard this, this network. Sometimes we don't want to process a specific network at all. Sometimes we want to generate a network for our own purposes. And this is actually to set you up for the work that you'll be doing with assignment two. Okay, in particular, if you go to modeling, there are all of these different types of graphs that you can generate. The ones that I want to talk about today are random graph, Watts Drogat Small Worlds, and Barabashi Albert Scale Free. Okay, um, we're only going to talk about random graph today because it's basically the same process. But I want you to see that if you don't have network data, you can generate that data and use that as a starting point for analysis of, of whatever your problem is. So for example, let's say we want to generate a random graph. Okay. Uh, you'll get a box like this. Okay. And we would specify the number of nodes. And I think in your assignment, it specifies something like 25 nodes. We need to specify a linking probability, right? Because remember, in a random graph, we're going to uh, randomly assign links to nodes based on a certain probability. You can give it something like 0.2. And then you need some seed for the random number generator. One is fine for our purposes. And this will create a random graph model network. We can quickly go to visualization, pick our old friend, KK, and come up with a very simple visualization so that we get a sense of what we're looking at. Okay, and by the way, it's important to say uh, we have many, many, many different visualizations available. Uh, you should, you know, experiment with them. Feel free to look them up and see what they do. We will talk about some of them, but there, there are many to choose from. What I want to really talk about, though, are some of the other things that we can do with this network. Okay, and we're going to start with analysis. Okay, so what we want to do is not just create these graphs, okay, but we want to actually discuss the properties of those graphs. We want to sort of to learn about them statistically. So we have some tools here like the Network Analysis Toolkit. And when you run the Network Analysis Toolkit against any network, it will generate some basic statistics. It'll tell you the number of nodes, okay, the number of isolated nodes, meaning nodes that are not part of uh, a giant component, let's say. It'll tell you the number of edges, tell you if there are any self-loops, talk about parallel edges and things like this. It'll give you the average degree, and it'll give you the largest connected component, which in this case is all of the nodes. And it will tell you the density, okay? Uh, so this will give you some, just some general information about the graph, which is handy to know. Okay, These are things that we probably want to know about most graphs so that we get a sense of what we're looking at. Now, one thing to keep in mind, it will also generate this log, which you can view in the viewing uh, software of your choice. So you, you won't lose this, Okay, even though this is what was printed in our console. You won't lose this. This may be useful to you, so you can always save it. Now, at this point, this is important for me to say, the way the data manager works, it's context-driven. Okay, So when it generates a new object, it will automatically change your context to that object. Okay, And one of the things that, that is a little awkward is you'll notice all of, well, not all, but many of your options have gone away now. Okay, you just can't do anything from the graph and network analysis log. The reason that you've lost it is it's only showing you things that you can actually calculate against the specific object in the data manager. So most of these things will only work if you're referring to a specific network. Okay, so if you come back to visualization, now we have all of these. Now we have all of these, and now we can pretty much do anything that we want. So the data manager doesn't just give you the list of the networks and things that you've generated, but it also tracks your context. So make, make sure that you're always clicked onto the thing that you want to be working with. Because if you clicked onto the log, let's say, you'll lose a lot of options. You'll lose all your visualization options. You'll lose some of your analysis options. You'll lose your pre-processing. So just one thing to keep in mind, that you want to make sure that you are managing the context of what graph or what network you're working with.
Okay, so one of the things that we'll have to do to get through assignment two is we'll have to uh, be able to pre-process some parts of a network. So one of the things that we want to model is what happens when a network is under deliberate attack and what happens when a network has random failures. It turns out that NWB has a really interesting way to model this. If you go to pre-processing, you can say something like, delete random nodes. It'll tell you, well, how many nodes do you want to delete? You know, let's start with something simple like, say, one. Okay, and notice, it produces a whole new network. Okay, and if we run the analysis tool against this new network, as we might expect, we have only 24 nodes and fewer edges than we had before. So the things that we want to look for is, you know, what happened to the what happened to the average degree? Do we still have only one component? That is to say, is it still a connected network? Right? And so we're actually tracking those types of things. We want to see what happens. In addition, we may want to know other things, right? So for example, we may want to, uh, and remember, you have to keep it in context. Okay, random node deletion. Okay, we want to make sure we're processing a network. Um, one of the nice things is they organize the algorithms that you can apply and the analysis techniques you can apply based on the type of graph that it is. So we're working with an unweighted, undirected graph, and these are the things that apply. Um, later, we'll be working with weighted and undirected, unweighted and directed, weighted and directed, and so on. But today, we're just going to sort of look at these. Okay? And some of the things that we're going to want to know, right? we'll want to see things like diameter. And we can calculate the diameter. Okay? And the diameter of this newly created network is 5. We may also want to calculate things like the average shortest path. Okay? It will just calculate it all for you. Okay, so this analysis tool, uh, basically this joining of pre-processing and analysis is how you will get through the assignment to work. Okay. Uh, just to keep this going, uh, to show you just, just a few other things, let's go back to the original network and look at some other pre-processing options. Instead of deleting random nodes, let's delete high degree nodes. Okay, meaning we want to delete things. So if we were talking about the social network that we looked at before, we would want to delete the Medici family, right, being of high degree. And we just want to remove one. And notice, this is simulating for us attack tolerance, right? What happens to the network if we attack the things that are most connected? Okay? And then let's rerun some of those, some of those algorithms. All right, let's see what happens to diameter. Okay, notice diameter is still the same. Okay, um, so this is really the key um, to getting through the assignment is you want to make sure that you can um, produce random graphs, that you can produce random graphs, WS graphs, and BA networks, and that you can delete random nodes to simulate failure and delete high degree nodes to simulate attack. And what you'll be doing is analyzing those networks with NAT and with a variety of measures in the unweighted and undirected uh, analysis tools to basically see how these networks behave when they're deliberately being attacked versus when they just have random failures. And what you'll see is that these different types of networks behave differently and sometimes behave differently um, from each other and sometimes behave differently under different circumstances. And that's really the point of this exercise. So that brings us to the end of our introduction to NWB. We will be using this uh, much more throughout the semester. And uh, have fun with it.